fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. The end of the Civil War and the passage of more liberal homestead laws saw the tide of emigration to the western United States reach its greatest height. Land was to be had for the asking, but peace and security were not, and the West could not be won until law and order were established. It was then that the masked rider of the plains first rode in the cause of justice. Astride his great horse, Silver, he fought crime and criminals throughout the new territory, and no man did more to make the frontier safe for honest men. Now return with us to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading north to the Oregon Trail. Someone's waiting for us. As our story opens, the Lone Ranger and Tonto have made their camp for the night on a bluff overlooking the famous trail to the northwest. The light of several campfires can be seen on the plain below. There's another wagon train, Tonto. Hmm. Me see it. That's what this part of the country needs. People to make homes here. People with the courage to face difficulties and fight for what they want. That'd be plenty good thing. Someday, the West will be just as rich as the East. That's right. But the people who will make it rich are these pioneers. What kind? Listen. That buffalo. Must be the herd we passed earlier today. And them come plenty fast. Something frightened them. They're stampeding. Uh, there they are. Them not far off. They're heading for the valley. I wonder oh, what you think. The valley's narrow. And it leads to the place where the wagon train is camped. That's right. Here, Silver. What you do? The buffalo may stop before they reach the wagon train, but if they don't, there'll be plenty of trouble. It's all right, Palatano. Here, my fellow. We'll follow the herd and see if they do any damage. That's it. That's a good idea. Come on, get on. My fellow. The men and women of the wagon train were resting around their campfires, unaware of the danger that threatened. Grant Elder, the leader of the train, was speaking to one of the groups. Well, folks, we covered a right good stretch of ground today. And tomorrow, we ought to do even better. Huh. I don't see where we've done so good. Now, don't you go to complaining again. Why shouldn't I complain? I'm darn sorry I ever came along. 
We should have stayed back east where we belong. Yeah? Trouble. Nothing but trouble is all we've had. First off, them contractors cheated us back in Eagle City. The grub they sold us was full of worms that ain't fit to eat. It's a blame sight better than nothing. We ain't had half water enough. Tom Billings' young one died the other day. Most of the wagons have broke down a dozen times or more. Trouble? <laughs> I'm so blame sick of it. I wish I'd never heard of this part of the country. That's no way to talk, Paul. You shouldn't Look be... Look here, the... Cora. Don't you be telling me what to think and what not to. You're getting just like your ma was. And what's more... Hey, Grant. What's the matter, Jim? Do you hear what I hear? No, I what, what is it? Heavens above, it's a mighty strange thing. It's a sort of rumbling. Now, what in blazes is this? Grant, hey, Grant. Huh? Get to the wagons. It's buffalo. They're pouring out of the valley like water. I see them now. They're heading right this way. The camp of the hurry, child. Run, Oops. run. Climb in the wagon. Drive out of here. Buffalo. Come on, get a move on. We're all down. Hurry up. <laughs> The buffaloes swept down upon the unprepared camp. Few of the men had time to hitch their horses, and still fewer were able to drive clear of the stampede. Come on, Kelly. Come on, get wagon there. Come on, get wagon there. a stroke of good fortune, the herd separated at the last moment, and the damage, though great, was not as heavy as it might have been. When the danger was over, Grant Elder tried desperately to reorganize the train. Jim, Dan, round up the women folks. Take account of everybody and see if anyone's hurt. All right, Billy. Ain't nobody hurt that I can see. Blast it. Take a look at my wagon. It'd get busted up, Silas? Busted up. There ain't enough left of it for kindling. My stuff strung out every which way. I've had just about an all I'm going to stand for. Shuck, Silas, you knew when we started out we'd have our troubles. I can take my share, but I... Who's that? I don't know. He called his horse Silver. Well, he can call his horse what he blame pleases. But what I'm saying is I've seen all the West I want to. And I ain't the only one that feels that way either. Oh, Silver! Oh, 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 man. Well, I'll be... <laughs> I'm not an outlaw. What that man is I have my own reasons for that. Came to see if we could help you. Well, outlaw or not, we can use all the help that comes our way, I reckon. We were afraid the buffalo might reach your camp. Did they do much damage? Damage? Why, the blasted critter's just about wrecked us. Do you wonder if we don't find somebody's been killed? Here comes Jim. Maybe he can tell us there is or not. Well, I've had a good look around, Grant. What'd you find out? Well, there's about a third of the wagons pretty well smashed up. But I think maybe some of them can be fixed again. Yeah? Anybody hurt? Not one, thank the Lord. We was mighty lucky that way. Where'd Dan get to? He's bringing the women folks along. There they are now. The land sakes alive. I never in my born days had such a scare. You all right, Cora? Just shook up a little, Paul. Folks, it's about time we had a showdown. Mean and just what, Silas? Well, it's like what I've been saying for the last week. The biggest mistake we ever made was to come out west. What I say is we ought to turn around come morning and head back for where we belong. Sure, Silas. What got into you? I'm just talking good sense. You really believe that, Silas? Well, look what's happened. If this was the first thing that'd gone wrong, maybe I wouldn't say nothing. But it's been one thing after another ever since we crossed the Mississippi. And now you want to turn back? Of course I do. Anybody with sense would feel the same. What do the rest of you think? I'm for I keeping on. Well, I don't know, Grant. Maybe Silas is right. Well, like Silas says, we've run into a heap more trouble than we ever figured on. Isn't the opportunity to make a new home worth the sacrifice? Sure, but... You then... men... Grant and the masked man are the only ones with any gumption. It ain't for women to judge. <laughs> We're good enough to nurse you when you're ailing and mend your clothes and do all the things you'd rather get out of. But when it comes to deciding anything, then it's only the men folks that have any say. Now, honey, it ain't right for you to speak up so. Well, isn't it right? We do our share, don't we? Cora. I don't care, Paul. You ought to ask us women what we think once in a while. Good for you, child. That's enough of that. I don't know. Oh, now you're the one here, Silas. Keep out of the right. Wait. Huh? Listen to me. When you people started out, it was to begin new lives in a new country. Don't give up now. Settlers are needed in the West. And whatever your hardships, you'll be repaid a hundred times before you're through. Just a second. Yes? I'm wondering just what your game is, anyhow. 
What are you so blamed anxious for us to keep on for? Looks mighty funny to me. You'll have to believe I'm thinking of your good. I don't have to believe nothing, and I don't... Silas, I declare you're the most contrary man I ever seen. Oh, oh. Hold on, everybody. This is something we can decide later on. But right now, we got work to do, and it's time we did it. That's good sense, anyhow. We'll straighten things out. Then maybe by tomorrow, Silas and the rest of you will get your gumption back. Come on, you fellas. Get them wagons straight now. Under the direction of Grant Elder and the masked man, order was quickly restored. The wagons were repaired, and in the morning, at the suggestion of the Lone Ranger, Dan and Jim trailed the buffaloes to obtain fresh meat for the train. We see the two men as they come within range of the herd. There they are up ahead, Jim. Yeah. And we'll stop here. If we get too close, maybe they'll start running again. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa there. Whoa, whoa. Better get off your horse, Jim. It'll be easier shooting. Reckon it will at that. There's a good-sized rock. That'll make a rest for our rifles. Come on. You know, Jim, I was just thinking. Thinking? Well, here we are. This will do fine. Yeah, I was thinking the mask fella might have the right of it after all. Mm, I don't know. Well, you don't hardly seem like we should have come all this way just to turn around again and trapes back home. Well, And maybe. all the women folks seem mighty set on going ahead. If we turn around, they're liable to make things right uncomfortable for us. It ain't for women to have the say. Of course it ain't, but still... Yeah, you know... I know what you mean. Well, we can talk about it later. Right now, we ought to be getting fresh meat. Uh-huh. I got my sights on that critter over to the left. Yeah? I'll take the one next to him. Ready? Yeah. Now, don't miss. I got mine. So did I. Come on, Will. What's that? Must be somebody else. Huh? Who could be? Well, maybe it's someone that we... Say... Them shots was aimed our way. Look, engines. They're coming over that hill. Back to the horses. Let the meat go. How many are there? I don't know. And I ain't waiting to find out. Uh, steady there, steady. We're heading for camp as fast as we can make it. Get up there. Get along with us. Get up there. Jim raced across the prairie toward the wagon train. As they neared the camp, their shouts brought a group of people running to meet them. Engine! We see rats here! Oh, there! Oh, 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 Engines fired at us. They heard the shooting at them buffalo. You sure there were Indians? We wouldn't mistake a thing like that. Then that settles it. That settles what? We are heading back east. We can face stampedes and dust and sickness. But when it comes to murder and redskins, it's time we got out of here. Indians wouldn't be likely to attack a wagon train as well guarded as yours. They just shot at Jim and Dan, didn't they? Because they saw them alone. How do we know what they'll do? Grant, I'm telling you, you can't make us go no further. Do the rest of you fellas feel like that? Well, I wasn't so sure but before, but right now I says the same as Silas. Uh, so and so do I. Well, then, I reckon that's what we'll have to do. Land sakes alive. Growed men is scared of a few painted savages. It's your own good we're considering as well as ours. It's the men that has to do the fighting. Let me oh, tell you, you that. Huh? Tired of it? Come, Tonto. Let me come. This is the first I've heard of Indians near here, Kimasabi. What we do? Steady, old fellow. <laughs> You and I are going to investigate those Indians. Mm, that good. I want to know more about them. Hey! Get them up, my head. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue the story. A wagon train led by Grant Elder became disheartened after a series of misfortunes. First, a herd of buffalo swept through the camp, leaving destruction in its wake. Then hostile Indians were encountered. The men decided to return to the east, and when the Lone Ranger was unable to change their minds, he decided to investigate the Indians which Jim and Dan had seen. As our second act opens, the masked man and his faithful companion are dismounting at the foot of a small hill. I think the Indians must be camped just beyond this hill, Tonto. Mm-hmm. Trail. Trail shown that. We'll try and get a look at them without being seen. Uh. Stay here, Silver. Come, Tonto. Many engine. Only a few from the tracks we've seen. Hmm. There, boy. I see it. If we can get that fire without being discovered, we can hide behind it. Uh, Careful now. Here, boy. Uh, this is far enough. Look down below. Hmm. There. Engine. But fewer than I'd expected. Aren't you never see them before? Uh, but I could give a close guess as to who they are. Who you think? You remember the Indians who raided the Overland Station? Uh huh. There were five of them. The soldiers have been hunting them for weeks. Uh huh. Me think them same fella. And so do I. See, there are five in this group. If they were dodging the law, this is probably the direction they would have chosen. That's right. Come, we've seen enough. Hmm. Tonto, did you notice the location of their camp? Uh, Tonto, see. You gave me an idea. What? That. I don't want the wagon train to turn back. Mm, that'd be a bad thing. The men aren't cowards, but they've met an unusual number of hardships. That's right. Naturally, they're discouraged. They'll go on if we can prove to them that the dangers they fear are mostly imaginary. What? What we do, huh? Steady, Silver. Yep. <coughs> now, don't. Just as soon as it's dark, we're going back to where the wagon train is camped. Mm, that, that good. And there, I believe, we'll get some willing help for our plan. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come on. Indignant at the attitude of the men, the women of the wagon train gathered in a separate group after the evening meal. Maggie, Jim Barton's wife, Cora, Silas Digby's daughter, and Jean, Dan Hardy's sister, voiced their resentment at what they consider the men's lack of resolution. Yeah, I'd like to shake them good. The very idea of turning back when we're this far along. They say they're going east in the morning. And they won't listen to us. It's mostly Pa's doing. He hadn't kept so everlastingly at the others. Maybe they wouldn't have agreed to going back so easy. It's just like men, folks. All is looking for the easy way out. Now, Maggie, I reckon they ain't no worse than the average. Hmm. I ain't never hear that the average man was any great shakes. Oh, if there was only something we could do. I've tried to talk to Dan, but when I say anything, he only grunts and says women don't understand things like men. And a good thing they don't. I was sort of hoping that mad man could argue them out of it. Wonder where he got to. Dan says he's likely some kind of a crook. A crook? <laughs> I just wish we had a whole wagon train full of his kind of crooks. There was something about him. Oh, mercy sakes, Jean. What the... Oh, oh, the masked man. The masked man again. Oh, uh, uh, you give me such a start. I'd like to talk to you. Oh, well, I I'll get Grant if you'll just wait a minute. I don't want to talk to Grant. Just answer this question. Do you women want to return to the East? Of course we don't. Why, we were saying that when you come up. All of us women want to keep on. Would you be willing to do something that might persuade the men to continue? But what is it? I think I have a plan. Honest? If, if only you had. I'll need your help. Stranger, we women came out here so we could have the kind of homes we always wanted. Maybe you don't know it, but when a woman's got her heart set on something, she'd wade through wildcats to get it. Good. Now, what do you got in mind? Listen to my plan. Wait until the men have gone to sleep tonight. And then... Do all of you understand? 
understand clearly what you're to do? <laughs> when I think of how the men folks will look. <laughs> they come, Paul. I'll leave now. But don't forget your instructions. We won't. <laughs> <laughs> Say, who was that I just seen you talking to? Uh, why, yes. Uh, you been up to something? Oh, now, Pa, Come will on, you... That masked man, was it him? And what if it was, Silas? My sister. He's an outlaw, that's what. <laughs> Women, bah. You listen to every smooth-spoken crook that comes along. But when your own men folks try to tell you something for your own good, you don't hear no better than if he was deep. Sentries were posted at night to guard against a surprise attack by the Indians. The early watch was shared by Grant Elder and Jim Barton. We see them now as they sit together on the tongue of a wagon, rifles held loosely across their knees. Uh, seems like a shame, Jim. Huh? What does? Leaving this country, going back east again. You know, the more I see of the West, the better I like it. It's mighty pretty country, but it's just as dangerous as it's good to look at. Yeah, I reckon. Uh, you got any idea what was bothering the women tonight? Shucks. They was just mad because they couldn't have their own way. Well, there's more to it than that. What makes you think so? Well, they was mad at first, all right. But later on, they was acting like maybe they had something up their sleeve. <laughs> You're just imagining things, Jim. Maggie was most likely trying to get you riled. Mm, maybe. What was that? I didn't hear nothing. Listen. <laughs> What's ailing you anyhow, Jim? You're as fidgety tonight as a girl at her wedding. I just swore I heard something. There weren't a thing. It's just the night being so black. The plains being so lonesome like that's... Getting on your nerves. Hey, you talk like I was a scary kid. Where? You <gasps> ain't it. Where? Over by the end of that wagon. Did you see it? See what? It was like a shadow. Come out of that wagon, then was gone. Just all of a sudden. By golly, you There's are... another. Grant, I'm going to have a look. Oh, you blame fool. Maybe I am. But how do you know there ain't engines sneaking into camp? You see anything? Just a minute. You better come back here and make yourself comfortable. If you're going to jump every time you see a shadow, you won't be fit to live with. I don't know. Maybe my eyes are going back on me. I told you there wasn't nothing, didn't I? Yeah, then but I... Then sit don't... down and forget about it. Now, like I was saying, them women didn't have nothing up their sleeves at all. Why, right now, I'll bet they're dreaming in their sleep about going back east. in the camp during the remainder of the night. But shortly after sunrise, Silas Digby looked inside the covered wagon where his daughter Cora was supposed to be sleeping. Leaping lizards! What's the matter, Silas? Cora, she's gone! Ain't she there? You heard me, didn't you? But she's gotta be. Well, she ain't. I just looked. But Jean's with her. Your sister? The two of them was gonna stay together last night. Leastways, that's what Jean told me. Now, where in thunder could they have got to? Grant! Hey, Grant! You calling me, Silas? Come here! And hurry up! Something wrong? My girl Cora and Dan's sister Jean have disappeared. What's that you said? Who's disappeared? Jean and Cora. But where's Maggie? She was with them, aren't she? Maggie? Why, she said she was staying with them. Well, I'll be... Hasn't anybody seen them? Grant, do you recollect last night? Huh? Them shadows and that noise I heard. You don't suppose... That engines got them? Oh, you're loco. But I... What'd just... you say about engines, Jim? It was while me and Grant was keeping guard. I thought I heard a noise and seen some shadows by the wagons, but I couldn't find nothing. Didn't you look to see if the women folks were safe? Well, I we didn't never look figured in... anything was really wrong. They've been took by them redskins as sure as blazes. Come on! Where you going? To get our horses. If them engines have got... Look at that! Oh, what in thunder? Oh, it's a masked man again. And look! The women are with it, what? and that ain't all. Huh? They're holding guns on engine. Engine? Can't you see them? Gene! Hey, Gene! Hold oh, silver! Oh, 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 oh,
What's the idea? Them redskins. You're gone, Lord. We've been, we've been uh, doing your work for you. What? With the help of the masked man. You've uh, been what? Oh, land sakes alive. Can't you understand plain English? Now look here, Maggie. Oh, I, I won't look here. It's you men that are going to do the looking and listening. Here's the engines you were so scared of. The masked man helped us no capture them. You women done that? There was no real danger, Grant. There were just five Indians. The women remained hidden with only the rifles they carried showing. Tato and I told the Indians they were surrounded, and they gave up. Well, well I'll be horns. Tato and I found their camp and thought of the plan. The women joined us during the night. At daylight, when the Indians could see the guns aiming at them from over the hill, we called on them to give up. Did you hear that, And they did, too. Then you blamed well we meant business. And these are the Indians who frightened you men. Made you decide to turn back. Well, I... It, uh, it seems sort of funny. The only thing funny about it is that you men were scared of something that us women fixed. Never mind them, Cora. I suppose they still figure the West is too hard on them. They'll be heading east again before the day is out. What do you say, fellas? I'll tell you what I say, Grant. We can't stand for women folks showing us up like this. If we turn back now, we'll be the laughing stock of everybody from here to Topeka. We gotta go on. You mean that, Jim? Yes. And we're going on right now. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes. Yes. You'll find all kinds of hardships on the trail ahead. Perhaps some of them will be worse than those you've already met. But this should prove that none are as bad as your imagination makes them. Stranger, you prove that a plenty. And it was me that said he was an outlaw. <laughs> outlaw? Why, land sakes, this is the man we've been hearing about ever since we left home. He's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>